Hi guys, I'm here. Um, today we are going to make Kernseife, or as you English speaking people call it, curd soap. Um, this video was requested by a couple of my pals from Soaping 101. So I thought I'm going to show you how to make it, since this process is largely unknown in America, it seems. Okay, so what you need is soap, basically. Um, I'm just going to show you how to make um, curd soap from um, soap scraps, which I have here. This is about two and a half pound of soap that I grated down myself and um, I grated it down because um, some of the soap had issues in terms of smell and in terms of color that didn't come out right and I didn't want to just rebatch it but make Kanseife out of it. Now what is Kanseife? Kanseife is basically um, a soap with 0% super fat, but um, what you always have, even with 0% super fat, if you just make it regular, uh, you will have glycerin in it. And, <coughs> excuse me, allergies. Um, in the process of salting out the soap batter, you will remove the glycerin thereby creating a very harsh soap that is not good for use on your skin but perfect if you want to use it as a house cleaning product. Um, what you will have to do then is um, figure out how much additional lye to add because you usually have some kind of super fat added. So I know that the soaps I grated down had a super fat of 6 or 7 percent and I know how much weight I have so I know that I'm going to have to add about uh, 40 grams of additional lye to saponify the excess oils in here. Now the first step is melting down the soap which is basically that I am going to throw this in a stock pot. This is my 9 quart stock pot that I bought from Ikea. Very cheap but really good. Just throw the stuff in here. to give you a view of inside the pot. So these are my soap scraps. And now I am going to add water to it, distilled water of course. And about um, two and a half times the weight of the soap. So about four liters. So I'm just going to add this now. That should be about right. And then I am going to take this over to the stove top and melt this down on low heat. Um, don't stir too much because we don't want a lot of bubbles. But um, if the soap doesn't melt down entirely you can just give it, give it a quick whiz with a stick blender. That would be totally fine. Um, I'll show you what we do next once the soap has melted down. This is going to take anywhere from half an hour to an hour. So be patient. See ya! 
my soap. Let's grab my stick water. It has now completely melted. I'm just gonna go through that. I have my light solution. Um, the water doesn't really matter, but like I said, um, you have to calculate the amount of lye you're going to use yourself. Don't be afraid if you lose a little, if you use a little too much, because excess lye will remain in the salt water. It will not stay in the soap. That's the beauty of it. So let's pour that in here and let's begin. Saponifying our super fat oils. I've just put my pot back on the stove to get it back to temperature and to speed along the saponification process a bit. So let's take some time and talk about our main ingredient, which is salt. Why do we need the salt? Um, right now we have basically liquid soap, but we want to extract the soap and remove it from the water and which is why we need the salt because it starts a chemical process that causes salt water and soap to split so we can remove the soap from the water um, which salt to use i'd go rather basic and just use sea salt Pure sea salt, do not use um, salt with added components such as iodine or fluoride or some anti-caking agents because those might have an impact on the salt quality. So we are going to measure out about 450 grams of salt which we are going to add to our soap for a little while. And this is coarse sea salt, but it doesn't really matter since you're dissolving it anyway. a bit more but doesn't really matter. So I'll take you over to the stove now. So this is how my soap looks right now. It doesn't really thicken much because um, of the amount of water that's in there but I'm just going to give it some time so it can saponify a little more. I don't know if you can see this. Shiny on the top. Okay, I'm going to give this another maybe 15 minutes. It's been another 15 minutes and I've put um, my pot on high heat because I want to bring it up to a boil. 
because now I am adding my salt in and the salt is going to cause the soap or the temperature of the soap to drop rapidly and we are going to continuously stir until all the salt is dissolved and the soap is going to go through different stages of let's say viscosity it's going to go like like um, a thick trace then it's going to liquefy again and then you're going to start to see the soap curdle and it's going to look much like cheese curdles hence the name so let's do this It's already getting thicker, so let's keep stirring. Okay. And now you can see some white things appearing so keep on stirring and whoops we're going to fall on white now so keep stirring We're starting to get curdles. Going to zoom in. So you can see this. And we're going to let it boil for a couple of minutes. So the salt water washes through the soap and removes some of the impurities. Which is important because I want to get the soap white and not brown. So let's wait for this. Hi guys, it has now been overnight and our soap is, let's just cut this because I'm getting out of there. Oh, come on. Okay. Hi, guys. This is our soap. As you can see, it's a nice and hard thingy. And I'm going to break it apart. And put it in my little bowl. I can drip a bit. 
and then I'm going to get rid of this lye water. So what you can see when I get to a bit nearer is that the lye salt water solution is really dark and we are going to have to salt out the soap until whatever remains um, in here comes out clear and is no longer this really yucky brown color. So I'm going to get rid of this liquid and then I'm going to clean out the pot a bit and get some more water hot and dissolve the soap again. I'll see you then. So I'm just trying to remove some of the foam. again. And I'll just use some alcohol. It's not entirely dissolved yet because there are still some soap pieces left. So I'm going to bring it back when that has happened. Okay, everything is dissolved nicely so we can add our salt. This is again 450 grams of sea salt. put the stove back on high. And now it's getting white again. And we're getting curds. So now the process is pretty much the same like before. We are going to wait until it boils and then let the salt water boil around and let the soap wash out for about two minutes or so and then we're going to take the pot back off the stove and let it cool down. 
Okay, this is the day after sorting out number two. And you can see the soap here. I think that's totally pretty. And I have some soap from the same stage of sorting out um, from the last time I made it that I'm going to finish off together now. So that's what I just did that. Okay, so I'm going to chuck this soap up. Then I'll be back. So this is my second batch of soap that I prepared. Going to cut this up too. The other one actually filled this bowl. So what is this? Eight cups. So I already put it in my warming up distilled water. So I'm going to cut this up too, and then we'll see you again. Okay, this is the rest of my cut up soap. And this, these are about six cups. So I have in my pot 14 cups. And since adding more And since adding more soap needs more salt, I'm going to measure out my salt right now. Okay, where's my salt? There. And since I'm using my little IKEA thingy, I can tell you how much cups of sea salt you're going to use. Okay, I have 850 grams of sea salt, which is light. Um, three and a quarter cups of coarse sea salt. Then you know. <laughs> and what I'm going to do now is put this back in the pot, let it melt down, and I'll see you then. Okay. Here we are guys, last time adding my salt. I have 250 gram because we are slowly going to reduce the salt. And the mixture is almost bubbling, so I don't think we're going to have to wait long. So let's add it in. And stirring. Nice and long. Let's get the heat up to nine.
I'm just gonna wash my hands, put these off there. Clean up the edges a bit. Welcome to the last part. My crock pot is on high and preheating and I am currently, let me show you, there's the soup and a colander and trying to get some water out. And I am going to put all the soap in there and I am going to melt it down and try to get to evaporate a bit of water. Then I'm going to let it cool down a bit and then add some essential oil. I don't know if you can read it. Citronella. There we go. I am terribly sorry guys because my camera ran out of battery again so I wasn't really able to record how I made the soap after all. So I'm going to take the time and explain right now. Um, I heated the soap up, I poured in my citronella essential oil which is the essential oil to put in curd soap here in Germany. Um, after that I poured it into my mold and left it there for about four days because it was really very soft and couldn't really be cut into pieces. So I waited and then unmolded and cut my soap and after a cure time of about three weeks, it was really hot here by the way, um, the soap pieces were hard as a rock as you can see in the pictures. Um, if you don't want to make curd soap from 
rebatch pieces. You can make it, of course, from uh, from scratch. And in my next video, I am going to show you how to do that. So be prepared and read my blog post on curd soap because I have a couple of recipes on what you can do with curd soap once you've made it. Bye guys!